Hey everyone, today I'm going to be demonstrating a new tool that I think is pretty interesting. It's available in the 10.2 release of Simple GIS Client, and we call it the Census Demographic Calculator. Essentially, what this tool allows you to do is approximate uh, population demographic data based upon uh, polygon areas in your shapefile so that you can take any shapefile with different polygon areas and approximate the population demographic data for those polygon areas. So to begin, I have a simple GIS client project that I've created and in this project I have several shapefiles loaded or a few shapefiles loaded and one of them being a zip code tabulation area. And if you notice over here on the right hand side, I have this new dialog box called the Census Demographic Calculator. And essentially, you bring up this dialog box by clicking on the Data Download Wizards, going to the bottom till you find Census Demographic Calculator. When you click on this menu, this new dialog box will appear along the right hand side of your map. And this is the main tool we use to uh, do our analysis. So, as I said, in this uh, simple GIS client project, I have this shapefile loaded called zip code tabulation areas. And it's just polygon features based upon the U.S. Census zip code tabulation areas. But this could be any type of polygon boundaries. Um, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to begin and we're going to use these zip code tabulation areas for our analysis today and for this example. So, I'm going to start by going to my Select Features tool, which is this tool button with the blue arrow, and I'm going to select several of these polygon boundaries that I want to analyze. And so as I draw my selection rectangle, I see that it highlights those polygon boundaries. And now in my Census Demographic Calculator, I see I have a list of shapefiles uh, that corresponds to the shapefiles in my map document and it only picks up polygon shapefiles so it's only shapefiles that contain polygon features and so as I select my zip code tabulation I see also have this uh, list box of uh, fields in the shapefile that I need to select the field that I can use to uniquely identify features in my shapefile so in this case, on this shapefile I'm using, I have this one field, it's the CCTA field that contains the zip code name essentially that I can use. And I also want to make sure that my under my analysis radio button, then I only want to query for the selected features only and not all features in the shapefile. Now I'm going to select a category from the US Census data that I want to query on. So I have all of these different categories that I could select. So anything from uh, housing statistics, income statistics, educational, uh, it's quite a few different categories that we could choose from. In my case, I'm just gonna look at the population statistics by sex. And then once I select a category, I see that I have a list of tables that I can choose out of that category. And these are tables uh, as defined by the U.S. Census Bureau. And as I select a table, I see that the fields available also changes. And this is all based on the American Community Survey five-year data from the U.S. Census Bureau. And so if I select the sex by age, I actually see um, several fields. And for instance, if I just select this first field, which is total, which stands for total population, and I want to add that to my query. I just click on this uh, button with a plus on it and I'm prompted to enter a field name for this and I'm just going to name it total just the same as before so that just adds it as you can see under my query fields here and I see that the first value here is the name that I'm given the field and the second value is the actual name of the field in the census table that is going to correspond to this. And in fact, 
I can actually select and aggregate several of these fields from the census table into a, one new field in my query result. So for instance, in this example, let's say I've selected the total population, but now I want to calculate the population from 18 through 35 years old, or 34 years old, let's say. So as I scroll down, I see that I have all of this breakdown in this particular table. It breaks it down first by sex between male and female, and then also by all these different age groups. And so I'm going to go under male, and I'm just going to click and drag down through all of the age groups that I'm interested in. In this case, starting with 18 and 19 year olds and scrolling down through uh, the 34 year olds. So I've selected all of these different age groups which are stored in separate fields in the underlying census table. And now I'm going to go down to the female breakdown because again I want the total population from 18 through 34 years old. And so now while holding the control key down on my keyboard, I'm going to select all of these age categories for the female breakdown as well. So again, going from 18 to 34 years old, and now I can see I have all of these selections, for these different age brackets in the female, and same thing for the male. And now when I click my plus button, I'm going to give a new field name that'll be the result or the aggregation or summing of all of these different fields. So I'm going to call it 18 to 34. And now see I have a new entry in my query fields. 18 to 34 is my new field name and it is comprised of all of these different fields from the underlying U.S. Census tables out of the American Community Survey again. So let's add one more. So I'm going to go back and I want to stick with the same category and table, although you could choose a different category and table if you wanted to. But now I'm going to choose, uh, let's go 35 through 54 years of age. So again, I'm going to start with the male breakdown and select all of these different age categories. I'm just simply clicking and dragging while holding my mouse down to select all of these different fields. And then I'm going to scroll down to the female breakdown. And while holding the control key down, so I keep my existing selection, I'm going to click and drag and add to my existing selection by selecting all of these different age brackets for the female population breakdown. I'll click the plus button once again. And now I'll give this a new field name. And I'll call this 35 to 54. Okay, so I've now added all of my query fields. If I made a mistake or simply want to remove one of these, I can simply click on it to select it and then click on the button with a minus sign on it to remove it from my query fields list. So right now I think this looks pretty good. I think we're ready to execute our query. So I'm just simply going to go here to the execute query button. I'll click on this button. And as I do at the bottom of my dialog box, I'll get a status indicating uh, what it's doing. It has now finished the query. And so um, basically it's presenting the results based on these selected features. And uh, so here's all my selected features here. And in my chart, I can see the results of each of those. So in this case, it's showing me by the three series and if I move my mouse over one of these bars I see it highlight red and the equivalent legend highlights as well as I move over the bar show me this is the total population value for that feature which is the 7130 and actually if I click on any of these bars in this graph here it'll flash on my map the area that that represents so as I move and just click on different ones, I can see the area in the map uh, represented by that feature. And so I can see my total population, and I can also see that I have the
the bars for my 18 to 34 year old population as well as the 35 to 54. So again, this shows me my results uh, for each of these features that's been selected. But also notice in my chart, I have this aggregated results tab. And if I click on that, this just shows me the grand total of all of these different areas. Um, so looking at the total population, I have around 110,000. And then you can also see I have the grand total for the 18 to 34 and 35 to 54 year olds. Now, if you'd like, I could also create a shape file from these results. So I'm going to, with this, with labels checkbox checked, it'll create a new shape file and then it'll go ahead and label this shape file based upon uh, these results. So when I click on create shape file, I get a file dialog box and I'm going to go ahead and overwrite a file that I already have out there, but you can create a new file by simply typing in a file name. And in this case, it's asking me, do I want to replace the file I select it and I'm going to say yes. And so as I click apply, see I have this new shape file added and I see that it is labeled based upon my results. So the top label is the unique uh, field value for that feature, which happens to be the zip code. And then the next values underneath are the total population, the 35 to 54 year olds and the, uh, I'm sorry, 18 to 34 year olds and then the 35 to 54 year olds. So let's assume for the sake of this example, if I was creating new territories uh, based upon these results, and let's say that I wanted territories that would be balanced somewhere around uh, that would serve a population of let's say 35 to 40,000 people each. So by looking at this then I could kind of see which areas I might be able to combine to create equal areas in terms of the total population. So I kind of see I have some smaller areas here with um, smaller population densities that I could possibly combine. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here to my layer edit and with my new shape file selected, I'll toggle the editing on and then I'm going to select a few of these features that I'd like to combine. So I'm going to use my edit feature tool and I'm going to select a few of these that I want to combine. So as I select them, then I'm going to come to my layer edit menu and um, select merge features. And in this case, I want to delete the original features because I'm replacing it with this new. So you see, I've just created this new feature that was a combination of the ones I had selected. Now the actual population values do not get changed. It just it takes the value of whatever was in the first feature so what we're going to do is we're going to merge some of these boundaries together and then we'll use the demographic calculator to recalculate our population um, to see how well we balance out. So I'm going to continue to merge a few of these that I think it'll take to kind of balance out. So I think that'll be one good area here that I've just merged together. Even though it's a quite a large geographic area, the population density um, that this area was made of was uh, a lot less so I think the total population will be close in this area once we recalculate it. So I'm going to go ahead and merge these two together as well to create a new feature and then I'm going to leave this remaining feature alone since this total population was already around 35,000 which is kind of in the range we were shooting for. So I'm going to toggle the editing off. And so now I have this new shapefile created. But if I look, I don't have that shapefile listed yet in my uh, select layer for analysis in my demographic calculator. So I need to refresh this list. And the way I do that is I simply close this calculator dialog box down and then reopen it. So when I do that, it'll resize the map window outside of my video portion uh, that I'm videoing here. 
So I'm going to pause just for a second just to close this and reopen it and resize my windows to fit in the video. So I just did that. And actually, um, now when I look under my census demographic calculator, I see that I now have this uh, new shape file that we had created in my available layers list. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go ahead and select all three of these new boundary features using my Select Features tool. And let's go ahead and select the unique identifier again. And I actually don't have to select any of these other field values and all because they all remain from my previous and I'm going to use the same ones. So I'm just going to select the unique identifier again. And I think we're all set then. So at this point, I can simply come and since all of this is already set, just re-execute my query for these new features. And as I do, again, once again, I see the status of my query at the bottom of the dialog box. And now I see that it is complete. And now if I look, it looks like we did a pretty good job of redefining these boundaries to balance out the population that we wanted to serve by these territories. And as I click on these, I can see the area represented on the map. So again, I have this one large area geographically, but the total population all appears to be within the range that we wanted when we said we wanted areas to serve uh, populations of 35 to 40,000. So it looks like we've accomplished that. I'm going to turn this layer off for now and I'm going to create a new shape file based upon our results. And I'm just going to select, again, I'm just going to overwrite an existing file I have already. And as I do, I see that it has added this new shape file to my map. And indeed, I see that I'm very close on all my populations. I'm at about 35, 36,000, about 37,000 and just under 38,000. So as far as defining our new territories, I think we did pretty well. So this was a brief uh, tutorial and introduction to this demographic calculator. Um, hopefully you see that it appears there is quite a bit of possibilities with this and hopefully you would find it as a useful tool. Again, it uses the uh, American Community Survey five-year data from the U.S. Census Bureau. So it reaches out to the uh, U.S. Census Bureau through its API service as you build these queries. So with that said, that concludes this demo. And as always, uh, please visit the website www.simplegissoftware.com for more information. Thank you.